welcome back to the study tree project i am jade otherwise known as i'm jade and jade today i'm gonna to be doing a rapid fire episode on something called the dunning kruger effect if you've ever studied psychology or cognitive neuroscience or behavior um, maybe you've come across it before but today i'm just going to go through what is the dunning kruger effect how does it affect you right now and how can we apply it to the idea of studying and effective revision. Okay, so the Dunning-Kruger effect was found in a study by two guys, one called Dunning, one called Kruger, and it's a cognitive bias that affects your perception of how good you are at something. It's generally described in this graph. Okay, I hope you can see this. So we have confidence on the y-axis and competence on the x-axis. For example, as I do more classes in A-level biology, my competence at A-level biology assumably increases. The more biology I know, the better I am at it. But this describes how confident I actually am in it. And you kind of assume that as your competence in something increases, your confidence would increase in like a linear fashion. Like the more competent, the more confident. But this doesn't happen. <laughs> we like to trick ourselves. Instead, initially, you have zero competence in a subject. You've never looked at it before, you've never tried to learn anything in it, so you're kind of down here. But as you start to acquire and remember some knowledge about a topic, we like to massively overinflate our confidence such that we think we're up here. At this stage, you're so unaware of all the stuff that you don't know. All you really know about this subject is everything that you do know. For example, you're learning a new language and you have just mastered some vocabulary or you've just, you've just done like a seven day Duolingo streak. You're like, you know what? In what I've done, I'm super confident. But that's because you've never had to have a conversation with a native speaker or be dropped into a zone where like your actual competence is shown. But then you learn more. Maybe you do some further reading. Maybe you get your test results back and you go over the knowledge again. Maybe you watch a documentary and realize that everything you knew about tigers from watching Tiger King does not make you an expert and you actually know nothing about tigers. And this is where it's overwhelming. And all of a sudden your confidence in the subject drops massively even though technically you are more competent than you were at this stage, you suddenly know everything that you don't know, which is a lot. We doubt ourselves, we know that we're not like a NASA professor, but eventually if you kept going with this subject and you got really deep into it, eventually you would become an expert and you would be able to more realistically know that you are confident in the subject without overinflating your sense of confidence. And so here we have the Dunning-Kruger effect. The dumb and the ignorant in the subject don't even really know that they're ignorant. The well-informed feel less confident than the ignorant because they're just aware of how much they don't know. And this is an issue because often the loudest person in the room, the most confident person in the room, is often not the one who actually has the better knowledge. Maybe you have done loads of extra reading so you don't want to pipe up in the conversation because you know that you don't have a super great depth of knowledge. Whereas this person might have read like one article on the subject and feel like they're suddenly really confident in it and be loud to discuss their opinions. So what can we learn from this other than just questioning the most confident person in the room? I think for me, this effect is just an invitation to never get too cocky or confident in your knowledge. If you do feel like you are super, super confident in the subject, then the reality is you're probably not a crazy expert yet. <laughs> For you, it's super important to be open to critique, open to feedback, being open-minded, listening to alternative opinions. Self-doubt where it leads to like low self-esteem is never good, but I think a healthy amount of like questioning your opinions about things is really valid. Equally, if you're down here, you're sort of not that confident in the subject. Acknowledge that you might just be a perfectionist and you might be more knowledgeable than you actually think. Maybe you're not giving yourself enough credit for the fact that you actually are more competent than the person who seems to be really competent. So I think in general, one of the things this invites is just being more self-aware. The awareness of what you know is called metacognition. So like you're being meta, like you're looking far out at the way that your cognition works. Question how confident you feel in a subject and then equally use objective measures like tests, feedback from an expert, a professional like a teacher and use those objective measures to help quantify your success and your confidence. And then a practical tip you can use for a vision, I highly recommend using active recall methods. I have a video on blurting where the idea is you take a chapter, for example, 
chapter four of A-level chemistry, you write yourself a few prompts and then you write down everything you can remember from that subject. And very quickly, you will identify your weaknesses and your gaps in your knowledge such that you sit here more, like you're not crazily confident because you realize that there's a lot you still need to learn, but you can quickly get a very good self-assessment of your competence. Whereas if you're using passive methods like reading the textbook, you very easily can overinflate your sense of confidence because sure you understand what's on the page but you aren't producing that knowledge you're just kind of like taking it in so yes active revision self-awareness whether that's like journaling writing yeah that's the dunning kruger i really hope you found this interesting i'm going to be studying some more stuff on cognitive neuroscience in my degree because i find it really fascinating please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it go check out my channel if you want See more of me, I guess. <laughs> and thank you for sticking around the study tube project. Have an amazing day. Bye.